Nebraska falls 3-34 against Michigan. Let's start to talk about it. Wasn't a good game. Um, just wasn't a good game. You know, it was it wasn't a good game to watch. It wasn't fun. Um, just struggles all the way around from when uh, we charted out there on offense to start off the game. Obviously, Chubb Purdy got the start, which was a huge point of contest. A lot of fans wanted Logan Smothers to start this game, me included. Uh, I thought Logan Smothers has been the better player this year. But Whipple still really stubborn, and he chose Purdy to go out there. And Purdy played, he played all right. Uh, he's 3 for 11, 56 yards before he got hurt uh, in the first half. And it, it, you know, he played all right. There was a couple pl- there were a couple uh, balls that he threw right to the defender, which were, was not good. Uh, there was one play specifically, Volkolek was running wide open on an out route, and um, he threw right to the defender. Should have been picked. But, uh, pretty, pretty really didn't have a good game. Obviously got hurt. We wish, wish him well. Honestly, I don't want to see him the rest of the year, though. I think hopefully Thompson comes back next week and – Mothers is the backup going forward. Mothers came in, was three for eight after Purdy got hurt, and three for eight again the whole second half. Uh, mind you, it was not it was not a good second half. It wasn't fun to watch. Only 15 yards passing. Nebraska only had 71 passing yards on the day. Just the, the Michigan defense does not get enough credit. They shut us down all game long. Um, running the running the ball wise wasn't good either. We had 75 rushes. Purdy was our leading rusher with 40 yards. And the Grant had only 11 rushes with 22 yards. Just one of the worst performance offensively that we've had maybe in the last decade. And, you know, only three points. And I understand we're playing a really good Michigan defense, but nothing was clicking and we didn't have a quarterback. Whipple, Whipple's his play calling over and over, time and time again, we've seen how incompetent this offense can be without Keith Thompson and with that with Whipple playing I mean with Whipple calling as bad as he did today and has ha, has called the last couple weeks we're gonna go nowhere anytime fast um, our leading receiver today was Marcus Washington with 30 36 yards two catches Trey Palmer a really bad day for Trey Palmer he kept you know I saw a tweet that I really thought was accurate Trey Palmer has not been the same receiver since Purdue he hasn't even been the best receiver on our team since Purdue. It's been Marcus Washington. Um, he just he, he can't catch a ball to save his life. We knew that when we got him from LSU that one of his downsides was catching the football consistently. Uh, he showed that again today. Let's talk about Michigan's offense really quick. J.J. McCarthy, of course, had a really good day passing the football. He didn't even drop back to pass him many times, only 17 times in this ball game, uh, 130 yards. Blake Corum had his way. I personally think Blake Corum's the best running back in the country. Had 160 on the ground, 28 runs, 28 runs, and really the thing that stands out to you is they averaged five yards per carry. When Michigan wanted to run the football down our throat, they could they could do it, and that's that's been the theme all year. We talked about in the Purdue break breakdown video. All all like we have one of the worst run stopping defenses in the league. Every not in the league in the in the country, and it was shown again today. They just run it down our throat every single play, especially in the fourth quarter to ice this game. And the defense wasn't doing the offense any favors in this game. No complimentary football. That's something that I've been a big proponent of. When we get our new head coach, which, by the way, I don't believe it should be Mickey. Uh, we, and I don't think that should be a hot take. I don't. I think we need to go out. <laughs> another another coach. Uh, I'll talk about that in later videos. But we get our new head coach, and we need complimentary football. Uh, defense helps offense. Offense helps defense. And the defense had a terrible day. People, some people were talking like this defense had a lot of future to it, and I think you know, or like a lot of hope for the future. I don't think so. Uh, there's a lot of guys on there who aren't going to be here next year, or a lot of guys on here who shouldn't be here next year. Artis Hausman had a good day. He's 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 going to be good, but besides him, weren't too many good players. Um, yeah, Blake Horn absolutely ripped us up. Ronnie Bell had a really good day against uh, us. Um, Michigan's one of their better receivers coming back from an injury last year. I mean, nothing to see here box score wise. I want to quickly pull up to see how many first downs we had in this game. Um, yeah, we had eight first downs in this game. By contrast, Michigan at 27. <laughs> uh, third down efficiency. There, there's a lot of things that I'll show you uh, really who di- who won the game. It was stats that will show you who dictated the game. We were five for 15 from third down. On third down. Not good. Not good. Uh, the turnovers. 
we we actually had zero turnovers in this game. Neither did Michigan. Uh, you know, looking back on it, it, didn't really feel that way. But yeah, I mean, we, we no turnovers on the day, so that's a bright spot. But you can't. I mean, the offense put up three points. What can you say about that? Um, just wasn't a good day. And obviously, we played one of the best teams in the country, Michigan. Was nothing, nothing to be happy about, and we're going to play Wisconsin next week. Hopefully, Casey Thompson's back. I, I'm a proponent. I think that we will end this year three and nine. I, nothing's going right right now, and you play two of the best teams running the football wise year in and year out in Wisconsin. Iowa to end your season. I don't think we'll have any luck against them. Hopefully, we beat Iowa. That's who, that's who I want to beat is Iowa. I haven't beat them in seven years. Eight years if we lose this year, but um, just just a, not a good good win or not a good loss at all. So um, again, three points. The point spread in this game was I think what ended was Michigan by three point five, so they barely covered. Um, Vegas knows what they're doing. I, I, there's not much for me to talk about in this game. I think one thing that needs to be talked about, and I'll, I can go and start talking about uh, have a conversation about this. Is the lack of talent on this team. I mean, there's only a couple of games in the Frost era that I felt like we totally were outclassed talent wise. And that was 2018 against Michigan at Michigan. Very similar to today. Completely outclassed. And I'm sorry, the talent is just not there. Um, and we knew that. The offensive line dominated this game. Trent Hickson, our center, awful game. I counted four bad snaps from him the entire game. He was awful. He was awful. The O line, awful. Tackles are going to be off the edge. Ben Hart was terrible again. I hate to always, you know, throw shots at Bryce Ben Hart, but he has been terrible. You know, entire, the entire line has been awful. Anthony Grant was not good today. Um, and let's be fair, the offensive line wasn't giving him any holes. Whipple, another thing that I have to complain about Whipple is Whipple refuses to adapt his offense. A lot of really good coordinators in college football or the NFL, they will adapt their offense to the – to the strengths of the offense, right? So if you have a quarterback that that his strength is running the football, you will mold your offense in that way. And he refuses to mold his offense around Smothers. He he. The reason why Smothers wasn't good in the second half wasn't because Smothers sucks. It's because he was running as a pro style quarterback. Smothers isn't a pro style quarterback, uh, so that's a huge problem. Um, I, I just think the defense the defense doesn't have any talent. Our trenches, when we have a new head coach, and I talked about this in my previous video, I think Aranda should be the guy. I don't think we're going to get Aranda. I think, honestly, we're going to get an unknown coach. I don't I don't think a lot of the smoke that you hear right now are going to be any of the guys who ended up, end up landing. But when we do get our new head coach, number one priority needs to be the trenches, and that's what it should have been the last two coaches, right? Mike Riley should have been that way. He didn't do that. When Mike Riley got here, he started recruiting California, got skill players. Same thing with Frost. Frost guy here, and he started recruiting guys from Florida. No no priority was given to the O-line. I don't care about bringing in four stars and five stars wide receivers. I don't care about that. Just give me four star and five star offensive line. Right. And, I, I, and we're not going to pull five stars because we haven't pulled a five star um, since what? Uh, Phil Callahan? It's been, it's been about 15 years. So, and we need to, you know, use the portal. Really, the offense, it's just no talent. The, the talent is, is the lack of talent everywhere. Lack of development is just really showing right now. And the coaching is terrible. Uh, I, there's not much to talk about, so I'm going to end it off now. But thank you guys for watching. And uh, hopefully the season ends soon. I never, I never thought I'd say that about Nebraska football, man. But this season has been painful. I just want to get it over with, get the new coach in here, get all the new players and get the new coaching staff in here, and let's start to build a culture and a mentality that accurately represents Nebraska football. So, go Big Red. See you, everybody. And hopefully uh, we beat Iowa, and hopefully we beat Wisconsin next week. That would be great, too. So, have a good night.